Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to the Toronto Raptors 119-109 loss to the Houston Rockets. Riker, how you feeling, yeah. brother? I'm frustrated, Ben. I am frustrated. <laughs> I'm going to sound off right away, and I'm going to say it's the same criticisms that I had last game, but exemplified here tonight Kyle Lowry stupid plays down the stretch and Nick Nurse with some whack defense this is one of the best coaches in the league and runs we're getting torched torched from the threes by the role players on Houston and we we, we maintain a box and one three a triangle offense triangle defense triangle plus two, two yeah some yeah. crazy defensive sets. <laughs> this is all. This is very specific fingers that can be pointed here tonight. I am livid with frustration, Ben. Livid. I'm just laughing because as soon as we picked up the picked up the phone before the podcast, it's. I I, I feel your frustration, right? I don't know if I'm as angry about it as you, but there's certainly a lot of poor things about this game tonight. And I guess we'll sound off on the defense first because the, the Toronto Raptors, they tried a different defensive scheme tonight. They ran a box one on Harden when he didn't have the ball and he only, he got very few shots at the beginning of the game. You know, it, it was a decent decent scheme for him in the first half as he didn't get many points, but the rest of the shooters will we'll bring that up. But when he had the ball, Riker, we were running two guys on Harden and a triangle a, and like three guys guarding the rest of the other players in a triangle zone. I don't think I've ever seen that in the league implemented and it was really weird for Nick Nurse to run that the whole entire game. The the it Rockets was adjusted. Ridiculous. Yeah, like ridiculous. They, they got, let everyone get hot. You got to do that in spurts if you're going to run it. There, listen, what is Mike D'Antoni but a coach that wants three-point shooters yes. to shoot? They crafted this team so that if one day NBA teams were stupid enough to double or triple team James Harden, <laughs> that at least two players on the court could hit their three-point shots. And we're running this defensive possession, the defensive set, the entire game. Ben McElmore was hitting shots. Daniel House Jr. probably had eight threes on us tonight. Austin Rivers. Ben. What was the logic behind this? I get it for the first quarter. I maybe even get it for the second half because we're close. But down the stretch, James Harden got his fifth offensive foul, or his fifth foul. I think three of those were offensive fouls. Guard him man-to-man. Let Marcus Gasol step up because you know he's going in for a floater. Mm-hmm. And allow that to be your defense. Instead, you're allowing them to take three-pointers every single possession, let alone the fast break, which sucked. The defensive fast break was awful. And I am so peeved right now because Nick Nurse had the same terrible defensive strategy against the, the Heat. Ben! Can you explain this? And I'm, I, I'm, I'm up in arms right now because not only that, but because we had this defensive set, they, we allowed them to have a small ball lineup, and we didn't even take advantage of it when Pascal Siakam had Austin, Austin Rivers in the post, James Harden in the post. He passed out of every single possession. Capel's mm-hmm. the biggest guy. The next biggest guy is P.J. Tucker. The next biggest is Austin Rivers. Yep. Yeah, no. The I, next I, biggest I, is Austin I, Rivers. Yeah, I want to go into a rant about Siakam in, in a little bit, but just to just to taper things off on the defense, because honestly, I think that box one it worked for a few possessions. It works. It works in spurts. And it, when we ran in the finals, we ran it in spurts. We didn't run the whole game running Steph Curry in a box one, and that's what, how it's supposed to be used. If you run it for a full entire game, you're gonna let Ben McLemore get a bunch of open shots. He knows he's gonna get the ball because the key is. These role players are still, even though they're they're quote unquote scrubs in the league. You know Ben McMore, he he's been having a decent season this year, but he's by no means one of the top tier players. A guy that should be getting twenty eight points against the Raptors, but when he knows he's going four against three, he gets the juices flowing, he gets the confidence going, and to let that build up and build up, build up over the course of a game. You know, he, he's going to be looking for shots. He's going to be confident, ready to knock them down. That's why you got to run your man-to-man. Let Harden get a few shots every every now and then, right? And then run it in spurts when Ben McElmore isn't feeling confident. Then the after not touching the ball after five, six, seven, eight possessions, he gets the ball in the wing. He's not going to be able to do anything with it. That's how that's supposed to be run. So, you know, I'm not... Nick Nurse knows what he's doing, and this scheme could have worked in stretches, but to run it the whole game, I think that was a that was a bit foolish. But you also brought up Pascal Siakam, and I went on a huge rant about this in the Miami Heat game. Pascal Siakam, he even brought it up after the game. He needs to be more aggressive. And tonight, I know the, the Miami Heat, they have great defenders like Bam and Abayo. They have, they have bigger guys. The Miami Heat are notoriously a good defensive team. Do you know what team isn't? The Houston Rockets. I know they have Capella down low. I know P.J. Tucker is a pretty good defensive player. But for a lot of stretches, you brought up James Harden was guarding Pascal Siakam in the paint. Uh, Austin Rivers, these small guys. And 
there was a lot of possessions where, you know, the, the Raptors were pretty smart. They they gave the ball to Siakam in the post, but he'd take his one, two dribbles, and he'd either take, like, a fadeaway floater, like a Marcus Gasol esque fadeaway floater, or he'd just kick it out when he could have did one of his spin moves and went straight to the rim. Siakam is our number one option. He's done... There's been games, so many games this season, where he's been our number one option, went straight to the rim. There's stretches in this one where he was looking competent, particularly in the first quarter, because I think he knew after the last game he needed to have a bounce-back game. And it looked like in the first half he was going to have that, but in the second half he reverted back to being passive, being a guy that's that's used to waiting around for Kawhi to do something. That's, That's what he looked like tonight, and I've been saying it from the start. If Siakam's going to be our number one option, our superstar, he needs to do it when it matters. When the Raptors make a run and it's getting close, you know, Kyle Lowry used to be that guy for us. He's not going to be that guy for us anymore, right? He, he's he's shown it the past few seasons. He's he's not Kyle Lowry's not your number one scoring option. We need Siakam to step into that role. And, you know, we're, we're relying on guys like Norman Powell, Kyle Lowry, who have been good for us, right? Unfortunately, Kyle had a bad last stretch of the games. Siakam's got to be that guy to take over. And, you know, I know it had you frustrated, Riker. I know you ended up having to break out a hammer or something to, to deal with the stress. What are your ben, thoughts I got on my that? stress. I got my stress hammer out right now, Ben. I was putting up some thumbtacks in my room so I could hang some posters and jerseys and whatnot. I put a little soft cap on it so I can whack it off my thigh every now and then when it gets a little bit heated. Ben, I'm, I'm whapping away here. It sounds weird, but my stress hammer is out. This is the irony to me, Ben. This is the irony right here, is that the Houston Rockets are 16th in the league in defensive rating, and I think that they were even lower than that at the beginning of the season. I believe that they were down the lower 20s a few games back in terms of Mm -hmm. defensive rating. Toronto Raptors have consistently been at the top. Right now they sit at fourth in defensive rating, and yet... The Raptors were shut down. Our number one guy on this team, the person we're looking to to be the franchise player in Pascal Siakam, we just maxed out. He is he absolutely disappears against probably the easiest offensive uh, or defensive players against him that he's going to get on any given night. Yep. And and the Raptors, who are supposed to be a top defensive team, play a set that made absolutely no sense. Mm-hmm. I. It's backwards, Ben, and and I agree. And to bring it back to a logical standpoint, I agree. And because there's been so much clout around James Harden as of late, he's coming off of a 60-point game against the Atlanta Hawks. It's big when an NBA player gets Mm. 60 points. Then he comes off against a 50-point game against the San Antonio Spurs, and there's obviously controversy around that game, double overtime thriller. So, Mm. yeah, there's a lot of attention that you need to give to James Harden, and I get why you want to double-team him. But at some point, at some point, you need to say, we are getting torched by all of the role players on the Houston Rockets. James Harden is consistently driving middle of the lane, and we know he's taking a floater, and Marc Gasol is consistently drawing the foul on that, the offensive foul. And then on the offensive end, we have Pascal Siakam, who's supposed to be our number one guy, is tentative. Mm-hmm. And Kyle Lowry's out here down the stretch, throwing plays that you're taught in grade six, never to pick up your dribble, throwing it to Russell Westbrook straight into the hands, throwing it out of bounds. It's as if, it's as if we reverted back to some sort of scrub yard, courtyard pickup basketball where half the guys have never played before. They're just athletic. Ben, I was shocked with the Knights' display. Yeah, certainly. It, it was... There was unfortunate things in this game, but the the good thing about it is there's stuff that the Raptors can clean up. I'm sure Siakam's going to look at these past two games and hopefully see Joel Embiid next game and and be aggressive. But that that's something we have to look forward to, you know, seeing that bounce back. I'm sure Nick Nurse will also learn from this one as well because Nick Nurse knows how to adapt, knows how to adjust. And I don't mind him trying this out for a full game, you know, in December in a regular season night, but. It's not it's not the ideal situation, but there was some positives to take out of this one. Norman Powell once again, you know, out of the frustration of last night, we re- didn't really bring up how well he played. You know, Norman Powell tonight with another great 14 point performance. Fred Van Vliet had 20. Kyle Lowry before down the stretch of this game, he he played solid tonight, 19 and 8. Uh, Siakam in the first half was solid. OG people, th- this is the unfortunate thing. The Raptors played well enough to win. But they had just a couple of glaring flaws that really took us out of this, the, getting this W. It really was. It was a team game that was the issue tonight. I mean, how many, what, what was the difference in terms of three-pointers made, 
right? Turnovers. The Raptors turned over the ball like crazy tonight. They didn't mm-hmm. play characteristic Toronto Raptors basketball. And yeah. I agree with you. I don't think that this is going to be the case moving forward. But yeah. the issue, this is a pivotal stretch that they have now. Not necessarily mm-hmm. pivotal, but it's a big, important game. Establish and, yourself. Uh, exactly. You have... The Miami Heat, loss, should have won that game. The Houston Rockets, I mean, I don't think that we deserve to lose in the fashion that we did because it was kind of weak. If it was a hard nose back and forth and you lose because of, you know, James Harden has some really well-defended but clutch makes, I'll take that loss, Mm -hmm. right? But we're losing against Daniel House Jr. tonight and Austin Rivers, and I I find that one hard to stomach. And now we have coming up another another 76ers matchup, a Clippers matchup. I'd be hard-pressed to assume that we're going to win the Clippers one. So it, it's it's going to be a bit of a rough stretch for the Raptors now, especially coming up to Christmas time where we play the Boston Celtics. You just you would hope that they'd have a better showing than this, Ben. But you're right. They have had some good performances, Norman Powell. And what do you think it takes for them to convert these close losses – into some victories. Is it an easy switch, or is there something radical that needs to happen? I think the, the Siakam down in the paint, getting him buckets when we need it, can, that swings the momentum. Because the reason the Toronto Raptors shooting has been so great this season, and the reason that most great shooting teams are good, is because they have a guy that when the, the momentum's going, going down the tubes. right? Because three-point shooting is, is very streaky for teams. When you see one of your teammates make it or you've hit a couple, right? the rest of the team t- tends to get going. I think the biggest issue for the past few games, and the reason you know the broadcast always brings it up, our three-point percentage has been down the last three games, is because we haven't really had that guy to get us the buckets when the offense isn't flowing. And we're relying on three-point shots to get us out of that, and that's not the smart strategy. So to have Pascal Siakam be more aggressive in timely moments, I think that will be a key for us. I think Kyle Lowry getting back in the groove, you know, putting maybe not the the same on fire numbers he was at the start of the year but him being back to regular Kyle Lowry will be very helpful for us and finding that role because I think Rondé Hall Jefferson tonight had 11 minutes he needs to get more minutes his energy is fire I know he was one of six tonight from the field but he's still an extreme positive he was the highest plus minus off the bench but you know, I, I think there's a lot of things Nick Nurse can look at and, and adjust with this Toronto Raptors team. I know he's trying different things out because he has to. We don't really have the same talent on the roster as we did last season, and we're going to have to get creative to beat these teams, but you you don't want to overdo it. And I don't mind us trying out things in the regular season. I'm sure we're going to figure it out, but yeah, there, there's, there's adjustments to be made, and there's reasons for the Toronto Raptors to get better against be- good teams. Yeah, absolutely, Ben. And like I said, I, I made the criticism last podcast is we integrated Ibaka and Lowry back into the lineup before we actually really lost any significant games Mm -hmm. with the weird kind of squad that we never expected would win games yeah so we don't know what their potential is so now we're working to find our way back to where we already were and that's a bit of a challenge and that's going to increase the frustrations but I'm sure they're going to figure it out we also have this really huge mystery of why Tristan Thompson is now being tossed around in the in the names of what we who we want to acquire and that's going to be a full another video Ben that's going to be us complaining even more about what's going on with this Toronto Raptors team but before we get into the weirdness we might as well get into the segment shall we yeah, certainly. And one thing I do want to bring up, we're beating the Clippers next week, right here. I don't care. I don't care what happens. We're not losing the Clippers twice this season. <laughs> <laughs> Love the confidence. Anyways, tonight, the spicy P lay of the day. It's, you know, the Toronto Raptors, they, they made made some runs during this game to, to come back. Houston had a stranglehold on this one pretty well the whole way. But to cap off one of the runs, I think it was in the fourth quarter, Serge Ibaka, he turned back the clock against his old teammates of James Harden and Russell Westbrook and came down and just yammed one home. It looked like he... You, you saw that dunk. How far did he jump from to, to throw that thing down in the paint? I don't know how he squeaked that in, Ben. It yep. seemed like he had to do the old Space Jam, Michael Jordan <laughs> arm stretch to get that one in. Yeah, I know. Serge Ibaka, he... He's got some ups. He gets some some random random dunks every every season. Even though he he likes the post hook, he he surprises some people with his ups every now and then. But not all. It's all those uh, Ben. It's all those cow tongues that Mafuzi <laughs> Chef is making. Biff penis. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, not all plays can be the spicy play of the day, and some just make you say OGs. Oh, Record, do you have an OGs play in mind? I uh, I don't know whether or not to give it to OGs or the Damari Carroll Gold Star. I'll save so, it for the gold star because I have I have an OGs in mind and all right. it's 
you know, we talked about the Raptors a lot on this podcast, but there's there's some three point shooting from the the Rockets that me me, me say OGs, but. The biggest OG's moment of the night tonight was that the fact that the Toronto Raptors, the one thing their defense was most effective in doing is making James Harden take extremely tough shots, right? Every shot that he took was remarkably difficult, and the fact that he went 7 for 11 from the field, when you look at all of the shots he took, they were remarkably difficult. He was in the paint shooting, you know, throwing the ball back over his head, trying to shoot over three people, and he made a bunch of them. He made a couple, uh, two, two were two were very contested threes. One was in transition. The James Harden shot remarkably efficient for the fact that we were playing this defense, and you just got to give credit to that man for for what he did. Oh, I absolutely agree. And he's a yeah. phenomenal player, but yeah. I would have liked it to see switch to a one-on-one defense. Oh yeah, that's I would have liked help, to see with, it. Yeah. With help, focusing on James Harden, obviously not just obviously just around, not such yeah. a hard double. I mean, yeah. they had the they they've crafted their offense so that when this happens, they could set three to four three point shooters around him, and then they are trained to take those spot up shots. So yeah. that's it. But not all plays can be the OG. Some just make it. Well, uh, not all plays can be the <laughs> Pele. Yeah. Listen. Ben, the Demari one, Carole the only, the Damari Carroll Gold, Gold Star Award for worst performance of the night. It goes to whatever ref. Uh, I mean, to be fair, this is the reason that they've implemented the ch- the uh, foul contests, the the coaches' challenges for exactly this type of play. There was a three point foul called an Austin Rivers against Fred Van Vliet, but I, I mean, I can see you reversing the call. Clearly, he didn't kick out his leg, Fred Van Vliet. He was going sideways. He opened his leg. Austin Rivers swept through. But not only did they reverse the call, but they gave an offensive foul to Fred Van Vliet. Ben, I'm curious to see what you sound off on, but I am I am shocked that they that they didn't just call off the foul, but they instead gave an offensive to Fred. I'm yeah, shocked. As a big fan of Reggie Miller, I've uh, I, I very much liked his game. I've watched a lot of his highlights. He's the, he's the guy that made that play kind of infamous to, to kick out the leg and get the offensive foul. It's something that was called a lot, especially 4-5. or five. Lowry always used to get dinged on it, and, you know, I, I wanted that to go down. I wanted the refs not to call it, but it was, in my opinion, it looked like an offensive foul on Fred. But do you think his leg came forward? To me, it looked like it went sideways. There's I think no that's way it went foul. forward I, and then got swept. Because Austin Rivers was clearly going on the side of him, and Fred Van Vliet stuck it out to generate the contact, whether you put it forward or sideways. It's a it's a tough one. It, it hurt my soul. I, I won't argue with you, man. I won't argue with you. But that was a pivotal play right there. Because yeah. that could, if he hit all three of his uh, free throws, that would have brought it to a three point possession. Genius play Maybe by Fred, we... though. Genius play by Fred. He definitely should have tried it. If the if D'Antoni doesn't make that coach's challenge, who knows? The Raptors might have won that game. But unfortunately, they they implemented this new rule. Hurt the Raptors tonight. It swings the momentum of the game. But I guess that's how yeah. it goes. But Riker. Fans, you guys are the best for making this far. Listeners, the Raptors Digest pod. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. Riker, any last words? Houston, we have a problem. The Toronto Raptors offense and defense (laughs) as of late. Ben, we'll turn it around, though, I promise. (laughs) For sure. All right, cheers.